All right, I am live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Miss Antoinette. You are my number one fan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are always the first one to log on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you doing today? Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. All right, hello, uh, what Miss Antoinette calls my worldwide curl house friends. I love it. Y'all, who do I have today? Y'all give me some shout outs. You all know I like to know who I'm talking to. So who is joining me tonight as we talk about plant-based living? I told you all, I'm gonna bring it. I told you it was coming. So hello, Teresa, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome, Sunflower. Welcome. Let's see. Hi, Miss Gladys. You know what, Miss Gladys? I owe you a call. I will follow up this evening. Uh, hey, Joan from Ohio. Thank you, Marie. My hair is beautiful. So, you know, I have switched it up again. Um, today, I went to one of our salons. Not today, actually on Monday. I went to one of our salons and got my hair braided in the front and the back is a wash and go so i got a little fancy i even put a little bit of jewelry in there as well just really trying to get fancy um but thank you i appreciate it hi miss evelyn hi miss jeanette welcome oh you're here welcome 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 miss jeanette uh, Miss Jeanette is one of my buddies who introduced me to the Veg Fest. Are y'all familiar with the Veg Fest? It's a, a vegan festival in Northern Virginia. And I went to the vegan festival this past Sunday. And it was a, amazing, amazing. So I'll make sure I tell you all about that as well. Okay, so we got uh, Tanita from Durham, North Carolina. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You all know... Um, I like to get started a few minutes late just to give a few more people time to log in. But I am so excited about tonight. I think I'm, I'm for the most part, I'm always excited when I go live. But I have a very special guest for you all tonight. I told you I was going to bring her. I told you last week I was going to bring her and she is here. So tonight we are going to switch it up a little bit. Yes, we're going to talk about hair some but I know the title is whether or not a plant-based diet is harmful or helpful to the hair. But ultimately, we're going to get really down to the root um, of why you may be having or continue to have hair loss. And I can promise you, I am a believer that a lot of times hair loss, hair growth is rooted in the body. Um, or the body being off balance or have something to do with the lack of health in the body. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, okay, so there's a Veg Fest in North Carolina this weekend. Are you all going? I know it's one. I went to the one in Northern Virginia. It's one in Richmond in September, and it's one in North Carolina this weekend. If you are in a city where there is a Veg Fest, I would strongly recommend you go. If you Google Veg Fest, I'm sure it will come right up. But I went, and my mind was just like blown away. It was just mind blowing learning about the benefits of plant based eating plant-based whole foods eating. Let me clarify, learning about the benefits of that. It was just absolutely amazing. I have something going on here, y'all. Let me check something. Um, oh, and there is also in, in, in Richmond, for those of you all who are in the Richmond area, there is the Black Vegan Experience. That will be held on Saturday, May 14th in Richmond, Virginia, the Black Vegan Experience on May 14th. I have never been uh, to the Black Vegan Experience and I am looking forward to it. And that is again on May 14th. For those of you all who are interested, you can get, Google that. That's actually in Richmond. Um, so I'm excited about it. I can't say that I'm vegan yet. I'm not going to say that. But... I am on my way. I am. The stuff that I have learned over the past few weeks, y'all, my mind is just like, 
you know that emoji on your phone where the brain is coming out like wow brain feels like it's about to explode that's how i feel i feel like my brain is about to explode because i'm learning all of the benefits of a plant-based diet i am i have i have been plant-based for three weeks did y'all hear me three weeks and so far there are 18 things within my body that have been healed, that have been restored, um, that have been corrected, that have gone away. 18 things within my body and counting. And it's only been three weeks. Hey, Edward, thanks for joining. Three weeks. The main thing is I have energy. I have so much energy. I have never been an early bird. Never, ever, ever. I sleep in late. I stay up late. Now, since I went plant-based, I wake up early. Not only do I wake up early, I actually have energy when I wake up early. I have energy. That is major for me, that I have energy when I wake up early. Um, that's the main thing. But 18 things, y'all, that have been corrected in my body since I went plant-based. Um, so hey, hi, hi, Angela. Can't believe you. I can't believe. I, yeah, I'm glad you made it too. It's men. Wait a minute, Angela. You're in England. Um, yes. Try to keep your eyeballs open. Thank you for joining us from England. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. If you fall asleep, it's okay. You can catch the replay. It's midnight there. Um, so you can catch the replay in about an hour. So I'm going to get started because you know, I like to talk. I'll just keep going and I forget to introduce myself. I am Karen Flowers. I am a licensed cosmetologist. I specialize in natural hair and I'm a trichologist, meaning I also help women with hair losses, it orders, scalp disorders, and hair restoration. So I am in the Richmond area. I have a product line, Curl House, that's dedicated to healthy hair and healthy scalp, curlhouse.com. I am with a salon, Just Main Salon. We are opening uh, 15 salons in the DMV, Richmond, and Tidewater areas. If you are in Virginia, just Maine's. I'm a part of that as well. And tonight, we are going to be talking about the benefits of plant-based living, a plant-based lifestyle. Yes, Maria, I said I am plant-based. I see already the questions are coming in. Can you please share how you get the protein? We are going to talk about all of that now, and I promise you, let me remind you, I've only been doing it for three weeks, so I do not pride myself in being an expert. I know my limitations. I'm not an expert yet, but I have someone online who is an expert, and she is here to answer all of your questions, one of them being the protein, because I, I get that question as well. So I'm going to go ahead and bring her in. Her name is Dr. Cena Madison. And I worked with Dr. Madison. Oh, I had my trichology practice in her uh, medical practice a few years back. So we are very close. She is awesome. I am going to stop talking and I'm going to bring her in. And you all can definitely drop your questions below. Um, I'm sure she'll answer some of your questions, but drop your questions below and you know that I will get to those questions. Even if you have hair related questions, um, I'll get to those questions at some point too. But here we go, Dr. Madison. Hey everybody. Oh, Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, woo, there we go. <laughs> Round of applause. Good to see you, good to see you. And thank you for joining. We have been waiting for you. So I am so glad you are here. The questions are already rolling in. Awesome. Um, I've kind of briefly introduced you, but I think you'll probably do a better job of introducing yourself. So who are you? Excellent. Um, so my name is Dr. Asina Madison, and I'm a primary care doctor, and I have taken a special interest in lifestyle medicine, which is like using nutrition and holistic things to help the body be healthy, reverse disease, using food, getting active. And like Karen has shared, you can eat to live. Yes. And I just live to eat. So I love to <laughs> eat and I know how to eat to live and eat good. So love sharing those insights with everybody. I'm not sure why all of a sudden I'm like tearing up. So why are you tearing? Are you, are you happy? I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, did something fall in my eye? Am I excited? 
Let's oh, see. oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We can't tell you. It is exciting. Today. Okay, you great. Fabulous. Awesome. So, okay. um, and we're in the Chesterfield, Virginia area. So only like about 15 minutes from downtown Richmond. And we see adult men, women, and children. Okay. Um, there's me and another doctor here. It's great. So. Yeah, so she's in the Richmond area. I did post um, at some point. I'll post it again. I do have her contact information on the screen for you all. I'll be posting it um, throughout the evening uh, if someone is interested in her. But she is, when I say y'all, she is awesome. She is a beast, okay? She is the one that introduced me to plant-based living a few years ago. I tried. I went plant-based for about two weeks. But uh, I try, but I know that you have done some really, really awesome things with helping people to reverse some chronic illnesses due to plant-based. So I guess the first question is, because it's a lot of uh, myths around plant-based too. So mm -hmm. what is a plant-based whole foods diet? Like, what is it when you say it? Because I know it means a lot of things. I what know. So whole food plant-based diet means like eating foods as natural as possible, as whole as they come. So it's like eating the apple instead of just drinking apple juice or having apple jacks, right? Very different. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. And so, <laughs> Excuse me. and minimally processed to no processed. Um, it does mean really minimizing, minimizing or excluding all animal proteins or animal products, um, including dairy, cheese, and, um, meat, milks, all that good stuff. So it's really yeah. minimizing that eggs as well. Anything that had a parent? Anything that had a parent. That's right. That's right. Eating plants, things that grow out of the ground, off a tree, off a vine, fair game. Okay. So why would someone go plant-based? You're tired of being sick. <laughs> that's a very that's good, a good reason. reason to do it. I tell yeah. people, if you know somebody that's tired of being sick, you send them to me. Because now you're ready to be well. And that's what we're about here at the Garden of Eden, helping people be well. And so, because, you know, when we start talking about changing how you eat, not eating chicken, those are fighting words, you know? So uh -huh. you got to want something more. Or if you want to just be preventive in your health, mm -hmm. never get sick. I like that as much as reversing it. So Yeah, that that is so true. Somebody said, um, ask and seafood. So plant-based, does that include seafood? So I hear a lot of people say, I'm plant-based, but I eat fish. Is that plant-based? Really, that's pescatarian. So when you eat okay. fish, that would make you pescatarian. That includes seafood. Okay. So what, what we and what you are referring to is plant-based, no meat, nothing that had eyeballs, nothing that swam, nothing that walked. It is just fruits and vegetables and grains. Yeah, whole grains, you got it, beans. Okay. Um, and it, maybe sometimes it's good to say whole food plant-based vegan, right? Oh, so that okay. people realize there's no animal products, but you can do whole food plant-based, like a very plant-rich, right? Okay. Plant-based, like I like I like to say plant-based because then the whole basis of what you're eating is like, I predominantly eat fruits and vegetables and beans and whole grains every day. And then off the top of my food pyramid, I may have some sweet stuff every now and then, but that's not the basis of what I'm eating and nourishing my body with every day. So okay. I like to say whole food plant-based, meaning it's predominantly animal-free, dairy-free, and all the other stuff that would make me feel bad. Okay. Um, it's tons of fruits, vegetables, um, a big salad every day, having some beans, whole mm -hmm. grains, like um, quinoa, bulgur. Let me ask you, what do you eat for breakfast? I like to eat fruit for breakfast. I make a smoothie. I make a smoothie. I put some sea moss in it. So like a, I take a cup of berries, frozen berries, a cup of like the mixed um, berries. Sometimes I have like the pineapple and peach mm -hmm. and just like a half cup of that. Put me two tablespoons of ground flaxseed in there. Add some water. If I want it sweeter, a half a banana. Blend that up. And I feel like a rock star for the day. Oh, that, that sounds so good. And I bet it's so colorful. It is. Foods. Okay, well, what I have for breakfast every day, I make a, I call it a detox smoothie, but it's green. It has spinach, kale, cilantro, turmeric, a green apple, mm -hmm. um, some berries like blueberry or strawberry, celery, um, a cucumber, and I think a, a ginger, and yeah. I 
it's like a green smoothie and I mix it all up and I drink it every morning and it, it doesn't taste bad. It actually tastes, you know, I like ginger, so it's not super sweet, but it's, I guess it's raw. It's no heat and it's just blended down into a juice. I add water and I feel amazing. And I now drink it every single day. Good. And I it, forgot it, I add spinach to mine too, Karen. Yeah. Something green has got to be in there. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes, I, I definitely like, agree. I put ginger in there if I have it. I definitely have a detox drink that I do. Like when, you know, you want to really amp it up. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. You're going to have to give me that formula when I want to amp it up. Okay. But you're going to add this with cilantro, watercress, stuff like that. It helps you mm -hmm. give it excess water that you're holding on to. And, and yes, Bilo, no Greek yogurt. Somebody said no Greek yogurt in smoothies. So, so I mean, not not if you're doing strictly plant based. Um, okay. But you can do Greek Greek yogurt is better than all the other yogurts, right? Okay. It's just made differently. So, and you, but not to kind of have all the excess sugars and gels okay. and colors that they tell you is fruit, but it's really like, you know, syrup. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so Greek yogurt plain. If you're not doing um, vegan, which is uh, an animal byproducts. Greek yogurt is good. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just plain Greek yogurt. It okay. tends to be a uh, permissible one. Yeah. We got, I know people are bringing in questions. That's fine. I promise you we'll get to all the questions. But you said something. I asked you, why would people go plant based? And you said, if you, what did you say? Tired of, being, being sick. tired of being sick. Like that is like, that response is so real. Like you're tired of being sick. So tell me about some of the things that you do to take people from being sick, the type of sicknesses that you see to being well. Because you said you do have a, I know you have a Be Well program. I know you'll talk about that at some point, but how do you take people from being sick to being well using plants? Yeah. So we like to do, we're primary care office. And so you can see us, you've got insurance or if you do cash pay. And I like to do a one-on-one -on -one consult initially where we found out what are your diagnoses? What kind of medicines are you taking? How motivated are you? What are your goals? Because I've got goals and you got goals and we got to mend those together to get you the results that you're looking for. And so often I try and encourage people, we, you know, we're starting out with water. How much water are you drinking? You know? 64 mm -hmm. ounces, let's get there. Because most people are dehydrated. Like, remember, we had our, the, the water challenges are real because most yeah. of us just don't drink enough water, right? So your back hurt, your knees hurt, your blood pressure's up because you're dehydrated. Migraines, the number one cause of headache is dehydration. So I'll tell some people, hey, I know it doesn't sound real scientific, but I just want you to drink 64 ounces of water every day until I see you back in two weeks. And wow. in two weeks, they come back telling me about another problem. I'm like, hey, what happened to the headaches? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, those went away. first is they're drinking their water doing it um you know half your body weight ounces is like the next heroic goal um uh -huh. but you can take baby steps so i like to have people take baby steps to reaching their goals so they don't feel overwhelmed and quit and give up right. um so that's so important and then it's you know i challenge them and say okay can you eat four fruits in a day yeah that's that's what you used to say when I used to work in your office and when I would try to, well, when I would encourage my clients to eat healthier or, and you would encourage them, like, if you can't go plant-based immediately, you would always say, tell them to increase their consumptions of whole fruits and vegetables. And when you increase that consumption of fruits and vegetables, then you're going to gradually decrease your consumption of animal. So I, I never forgot that. I thought that was an excellent trans, uh, transition for people who just couldn't do it cold turkey. That's right. And what so. happens is when you start to, let's say right that that sweet tooth and you start to quench it with fruit, all of a sudden now your cravings will change from what in the junk to craving real fruits, real vegetables. And so mm -hmm. if you just start packing in the plants, that's why you tell people, you pack in the plants on that plate and start squeezing out, you know, drop down to four ounces of meat every day. Because mm -hmm. most people eat like some kind of meat or animal protein three times a day, maybe Yeah, four. I, I thought about that. We might eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. Yeah, like every meal has every meal. It's meat. Yeah, okay. So what are some, I know you do, and some of the people up here do have um, chronic illness or auto um, autoimmune diseases like diabetes, for example. I, I know from doing my research and from working with you that plant-based diet definitely, definitely corrects or reverses diabetes. So can you talk about that some? 
Yeah, type 2 diabetes. We're actually doing our Cure Di our Be Well Cure Diabetes program right now. It's on Thursdays from 4 to 5 p.m. and just educating people on these simple truths, right? There's so many myths, like you say, but if you, um, insulin resistance is increased with dairy, meat, including chicken, sorry, y'all, okay. um, eggs, and when you use beans, fruits, vegetables, um, that helps you reverse it and undo diabetes. So type 2 diabetes, I actually had a patient who had an A1C, that's how we measure diabetes, and it was up to like 12, and I was just like, you know, just take the challenge with me. Give me three months. Let's do it. You know, she was ready to dive in because she, she had some uh -huh. issues. She came back and her hemoglobin A1C was like 5.7. Wow. Which is how, how, how long? Three months. three months. She did it in three months. But she was committed. She got it in. No, no cheating and teasing. So wow. there's some studies where people reverse theirs in three weeks if they put them in a hotel to control for stress. Three weeks, Karen, coming that, off of insulin. Three weeks. Three. And so if you want to be gradual, seven months. Like, well, at least it's not for your life because that's the lie is to believe that you have to die with this. Yeah. As long you got to take how to eat to live. Yeah. And you got to take medicine for it every day for the rest of your life. Like, that is why I love Dr. Madison, y'all, because she she's an MD. She's a doctor. But you very rarely hear doctors talk about reversing or treating clients with food. Like I just she's the first doctor that I met personally that that is her goal. She's going to treat the client with food. She's going to help wean them off the medication. And I use the word wean and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but that is what I love and appreciate about her most. She's going to take the healthy way to be healthy, like be in good health, yes. be in good health. So diabetes, what about cholesterol? Cause I Absolutely. know people, these are some of the things like when I treat my trichology clients, people are dealing with hair loss. They have a, they have a lot of illnesses, a lot of things they're taking medication for. And I know, as I would tell some of them, like it's going to be an uphill battle to mm -hmm. restore your hair without first restoring your body because mm -hmm. your hair is the very last thing to receive nutrients. Like the nutrients that you would take go to support your vital organs first and the hair is last it's That's like right. the very last thing so it's like this uphill battle trying to restore people's hair when they have a lot of health challenges as well so what about cholesterol that's another one that i hear a lot about absolutely the wonderful thing is the whole food plant-based diet will lower and reverse high cholesterol too wow same just foods like just like that just that like that. we're doing a four-week program and I do their labs at the beginning of the four weeks and at the end of the four weeks. And normally we recheck cholesterol like three months mm -hmm. and we will see numbers dropping, maybe like 20 points down or 10 percent down. I mean, that's that's like as good as a statin, a drug, you know, so that's in four weeks. And statin is what most doctors will put people on for cholesterol and they're on it for the rest of their life. Mm hmm. It's like God didn't divide, design our bodies to be hooked on medication for the rest of our lives. That's right. But and the sad part is that with prolonged use of that medication, it can increase your risk of developing diabetes. Really? That's the side effect. That's so. Crazy. You know, you know, if you've had recent heart attacks and like that, you you people get on it, right? So that was oh. life threatening. You kind of don't want to die. Um, mm -hmm. And then you should become really aggressive about learning how to change your lifestyle, your nutrition, so that you can eventually wean back off of it because now mm -hmm. your body is in this non-inflamed state. It's mm -hmm. in a very pro-healing state. And that's what you can do. You can reverse the blockages in arteries. There's a cool movie out called, um, well, it's pretty old, but Forks Over Knives. It's great. Mm -hmm. And it's a medical cardiologist who proven it. Um, and... It's amazing. Like you can eat your way and get your blood vessels back open instead of having another surgery to have a bypass or have stents. That is it. Forks up, forks over knives. I've seen forks that. Over knives, yeah. Changers. I've seen what the health. Yes. What the health? You gotta start there, y'all. Y'all haven't watched what the health. Yeah, what the health? And even I know for me, as I said, it's 18 things because I write down something every morning. It's like, oh, I don't do that anymore. Let me write that down on my list. One of the things that have been corrected in my body is my 
uh, inflammation in my hands. You know, I'm a hairstylist. So my hands just started to get stuck and tight. My hands were, were bare, my neck, my fingers were very tender. Like I hadn't been to the doctor about it or anything like, but I, I know it was inflammation within the body. I don't want to say arthritis, even though I think arthritis has an inflammatory component, but I know I had inflammation in my fingers and within three weeks, no inflammation in my fingers, none, no inflammation. My hands feel great within Ooh. three weeks, no inflammation. So, and I, and I also read that plant-based will help with, uh, help to reverse uh, rheumatoid arthritis or different mm -hmm. types of arthritis from yeah. plant. Yeah. So it's is it because with plant based you are getting all of the nutrients and more vitamin like more more vitamins, more nutrients, and more protein. So I'm gonna put this question up because I knew this was gonna be a question. Can you please share how you get protein from plant based? Well. If you'll let me answer that question about the joints, because okay, great. joint pain, so many people will think, oh, it's just because I'm overweight. Oh, it's just because I had this surgery or just because I'm a hairstylist, right? Or it's because you're eating white processed sugar, which is inflammatory. Or it's because you're eat, dr eat, drinking dairy, right? You're eating a lot of cheese. You're drinking cow milk. Even if it's just a little bit in your coffee every single day of your life, that starts to add up. Um, those who are inflammatory, processed things in packages. I mean, you know, you, you may not think of what. Bologna, um, oh, bologna, turkey, chicken, like the slices of meat uh -huh. that you eat for like lunch, deli meats, that's processed. That's, you know, those are inflammatory things. Excessive salt is inflammatory. And so now you go into this very alkaline, very nutrient rich, anti-inflammatory diet, which is what a whole food plant-based diet is. So all that spinach that you're eating now, those berries, all those things decrease inflammation. You know, you're eating those herbs now in your smoothie here and so yeah. it's all going to just make your body heal and be restored and give it the influence. gender is great anti-inflammatory you're just eating your medicine that is you're feeling better i am and i'm so glad you you clarify that my the inflammation in my hands is not because I'm a hairstylist mm -hmm. i'm so glad it's from thank you for checking me i don't mind being checked <laughs> It is not because I'm a hairstylist because I'm using my hands, but it's because of what I was putting in my body. That was the difference. That's why I started to feel this inflammation mm -hmm. in my hands. So mm -hmm. thank you for checking me. Now, no, what about great. protein? What about, yes. What about protein? I hear this question. As soon as I said it, uh, Maria said, okay. Can you please share you how you get protein? You get plenty of protein in a whole food plant-based diet, right? Protein. You, let me be scientific for one moment. You get um, nitrogen is required to make protein, and that only comes from plants. So, okay, say that one more time. I got to get it in. Say it one more time. Nitrogen comes is only made by plants, and that is what's required to make an amino acid. Okay. So okay. amino acids are the building blocks for protein. Okay. And so the, you, so everybody's got to eat the plant. The cow has to eat the plant. The, the ape has to eat the plant. You've got to eat the plant to get big, right? You don't see apes eating other animals to get big, do you? Do you think he's got a protein deficiency? Uh, I'm sure not. No. So it, they don't eat other animals. So, okay. So we're eating, or I used to eat, the flesh from animals. So in the flesh from animal was the, the, the protein in animals just came from the plants that the protein ate. So That's you can right. bypass, not the protein ate, that the animal ate. So you can bypass past the cow and just go to the plant that the cow ate. Right. Oh, right. because the, the protein is in the plant. It's in the plant. That's the one doing the conversion. So you eat the plants and then it's in beans. I mean, there's tons of protein in beans, tons of protein in your nuts, cashews, almonds. Um, better to have them raw and unsalted so you get all the nutrients without any addictive factors. Okay. You get tons of it. Oh, tons wow. of it. You, so you, you will not have a protein deficiency. Okay. You know, have you ever met any? I mean, I'm just thinking about it. Like even when I do consultations, I've heard iron deficiency, vitamin D deficiency. I have never ever heard anyone say I am protein deficient. Not in these United States of America. We yeah. have more than enough. <laughs> Matter of fact, we probably many people have a protein excess, and it's causing kidney failure. Right. Um, is so that we from can, eating too much protein in meat? It can be. Mm -hmm. oh, meat oh, can I be inflammatory know. to the kidneys. 
I have never, I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Okay, I'm going to pop these questions or roll it in for you. So I'm going to put this one up in terms of uh, this person is vitamin. Can you see the questions? Uh, I can. can. Okay, so this person is vitamin D deficient. What foods are rich in vitamin, I guess, besides dairy? Rich in vitamin D? If someone is vitamin D deficient? You know, I'm actually not sure if that's a scientific fact that dairy has vitamin D in it. I think it's enriched mm. with vitamin D. Okay. So vitamin D naturally comes from the sun. So the answer is get in the sun. Let the, <laughs> let the sun hit your skin, hit your face. You can get 20 minutes a day. Okay. Not walking to your car, like that doesn't count. Sitting in your car, your elbow sticking out the window. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about embracing the sunlight. And while you're out there, you might as well take a walk and get 20 minutes in a day. That is, uh, let allow me to introduce you all to Dr. Madison. <laughs> oh, God, when I work with her, it was, okay, come on, Karen, it's lunch. Let's go out. Let's take a walk. Let's go get some sun on our lunch break. I'm like, oh, okay, come on, let me bring my sneakers. Yes, yeah, she will encourage you. Get your vitamin D. Yeah. Okay. So you say you don't even know if vitamin D is in dairy. I think it's enriched. Like, I don't know if it's naturally there. Um, okay. I think mushrooms are supposed to have vitamin D in it, but because okay. of how they're pro raising them and they're not growing in their natural habitat like they should with all the sun on them. So they're actually not, don't have as much vitamin D either. So pretty much okay. your vitamin D, you're in the sun. And when it turns fall, like late fall, especially here, you probably need to be on a vitamin D supplement so that you don't get deficient in the winter, which was a lot behind what was going on with COVID for many people or the cold and flu season. You're just vitamin D deficient because you haven't been in the sun because of the okay. angle of the sun in our in our winter solstice. So okay. definitely supplement with vitamin D um, throughout the winter and early spring. Okay. All right. So Miss Antoinette wants to know, what if you're already thin? She can't afford to lose any more weight. So she's making a, I, I guess, plant-based is connected to weight loss. So, Correct. Okay. So what if you're already thin? Great question. Your body is super smart, okay? It will get you into a range that it likes and then it can lock you in. So if it's getting smaller than it wants, it will encourage you to eat more. If it's bigger than it wants, it will encourage you to say, no, we're full, we're good. So if you, you'll you so learn to listen to your body and realize you'll eat when you're hungry and when it wants more calories, you'll find yourself eating. And just as long as you're eating foods that are good for you, eat up, eat up. You don't, you don't, you lose body fat. And if you want to bulk up like men, women who want to put on muscle, you just work out. If you want to build muscle, you work out. Yeah. Um, but otherwise you lean out like you should be. Most of us are morbidly obese or too overweight. And when we see someone get thin, we think, oh, she's so skinny. And it's such a disservice because she's really just probably the right weight. Right, right. Yeah. And so, which is what's healthy for your body. So you don't have to be afraid. Um, you just can be intentional about eating your nuts. Your healthy fats, like in your nuts, are healthy fats. Um, learn how to eat avocados and enjoy them. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> guacamole or rub it on something as a spread. It's good. So I forgot to ask you. You used to pass out a um, something called my plate. Mm -hmm. I was meaning to tell you to grab that if you had it, or give us a resource for where we can get it. Just it showed what what it was for plant based, and it had mm -hmm. what what amount of what grain or fruit or vegetable you should eat um, daily. Like yeah, what's you go to our website. Like? That's all right. If you go to our website, gardenofedenrva.com, okay. on our resources page, you'll find it and it'll say my plate. And so you can pop that up, download it, have it as a reference, and okay. it will be good for you. Okay, uh, great. thank you. I needed to know that myself. Wonderful. Okay, so um, Angelica wants to know if you can treat hypothyroidism and with weight loss. So I think we answered the question about weight loss. So can you treat hypothyroidism? I know I just looked at, you know, I said I just went three weeks ago and I've been reading all this stuff and studying all this stuff. And I told people earlier that I went to the veg fest, my first veg fest on Sunday. And it was a doctor there and he pulled up some studies, um, Angelica, where he actually talked about how plant-based diet did reverse hypo and hyperthyroidism but that was just the doctor that i listened to on sunday but what do you think dr madison that's great that is I, great I, research yeah, it's studies out there it's yes. studies out there y'all this stuff is documented documented in legit scientific format right yes. double blind placebo yeah. study 
controlled, yeah. everything you need for it to be good science. And it's out there. Some of it is super old, like 1960s, 1920s. You're like, this isn't it, even new. Yeah, it was, it was, it's been out there all this time. All this time. All, all this time. time. It's been out there. It's been there. So been, you do. Yes, you absolutely can treat um, hypothyroidism. So I like that I'm a medical doctor so I can draw lab work, interpret them for you. Do some lifestyle changes, change up how you're eating, you know, see if there's any zinc deficiency, make sure you're getting, you know, good nutrients in your um, in your life and in your body so that it can kind of help heal. So we absolutely can treat that at, at our clinic and with whole food plant based. Um, it's like, yeah. what what can you what can't you treat with whole food plant based? I even. I, I've seen so many studies on whole food plant based where it seems like you can treat almost anything because I guess ultimate what is what's that say twenty good right. reasons to twenty join. reasons be to well. be well. All right, tell us about be well. All right, you can improve blood pressure, blood sugar, lower cholesterol, less UTIs, boost your immune system, less cancer, be more attractive, right? Makes your skin look better and glow. Dietary satisfaction, so you eat and you're satisfied and full. Reduce sleep apnea. You can shrink fibroids. Yeah, you hear that, lady? Judah and fibroids can be shrunk. Wow. Getting off that dairy and cheese and yogurt and eating fruits and vegetables and getting vitamin D. Many women with fibroids are vitamin D deficiency. Wow. Improve cognition, so brain fog, forgetfulness. A lot of that can be due to inflammation that's in the brain. So we check something called homocysteine to assess where you are for that. Greater happiness. Y'all thought Karen was vibrant before these three weeks. I think she's going to another level. Yes. <laughs> but we feel happy doing this. We're not on this because we are tired and depressed and mad because we can't eat a piece of chicken. We can eat the chicken if we want to. Yeah. But we just choose not to because it doesn't make us feel as awesome as like some sweet potato, broccoli, and cauliflower and some, you know, shiitake mushrooms. Mm, that sounds good. Okay. Mm, yes. Um, have to live longer, right? You would look 14 years younger. Um, 14 years. Did you 14 hear that? years. 14 years younger. You know what? You, I, I met someone at that veg fest. He was uh, one of the doctors who was speaking. Mm -hmm. He was 70 and I was blown yes. away. 70. Yes. He had been vegan for 50 years and Come he on. looked amazing 50 mm -hmm. years you can reduce pcos which in, and improve fertility right yes yeah that one of the foods that we impact our fertility reproduction there was a study oh, it was such a sad study because it was done predominantly i think in african-american women and just women mm -hmm. of dark you know color and the more chicken that they ate mm -hmm. the more they saw miscarriages mm -hmm. or early Pregnancy. Yeah, I think you told me about that. Yeah. Really? So the more chicken, the more miscarriages. The more miscarriages they had. And what you said, because often when women get pregnant, they say, okay, be sure to eat enough protein. Mm -hmm. If you're a protein of choice because you're trying to be healthier as chicken, now we're increasing. And, it, you know, maybe it's not just the chicken, right? If it was part of that little skinny looking chicken that wasn't injected with hormones, it got to eat what it naturally should, probably wouldn't have that effect. But wow. you know, we can get chicken now pretty readily having multiple times a day. Why is that? You yeah, know? you are absolutely right. So, so what do you think about a raw diet? Raw diet, I mean, it definitely works. It's hard to maintain. <laughs> 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 but but let's say if you're plateauing in your weight and you're like, how can I get this weight to come down? Go raw. Do raw for a week. You're tired of being sick, do raw for three weeks, 21 oh. days. You know, have you ever heard of the Daniel Fast? I mean, doing that for 21 days is oh, a good yeah. reset. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They look 10, 10 times better. They were 10 times smarter. Really? Okay. Yeah. So what the Daniel fast, is that raw? Is it it raw can be raw. Now, they weren't okay. even eating raw. But um, but raw okay. really means that you're not cooking it. You know, you're it's, it's very whole food, right? It's as grown. And so you get tons of nutrients out of it that you would lose due to cooking, right? Every time we cook food, we tend to lose a certain amount of the nutrients. Okay. Um, and that's okay. Thank God. You know, I think there's one study that I read that said eating 85% raw and 35% cooked is the equivalent of eating 100% raw, like the health benefits that you got out of it. And I was so gracious. Oh, wait, say that one more time. 85% and 30, 85%. Is, is, that, is that math right? 
85 percent wrong maybe it's 25 85 25 maybe it's 25 85 8 19 15 what? Oh, wait, oh 65 it must be 65 oh yeah <laughs> okay 65 percent raw and 35 percent um uh cooked. cooked and you say it's equivalent to it's what equivalent to 100 eating 100 percent raw oh really okay right. so you still you know have that, a good one cooked meal a day or so and it'll yeah. be predominantly raw and you get tons of good benefits but there's a lot of healing that your body just gets to focus on when you eat raw okay okay <laughs> that is i i think because i'm going to try to eat more raw foods like i drink that i don't know if blending up yes and vegetables in the in the morning is considered raw but um it is okay yeah so i drink that in the morning yeah. it, it is amazing it yeah. is so i can tell like eating more uh hassan and i we're gonna start eating more raw foods we're gonna try it now i need some recipes but we are definitely going to try more raw foods but um, don't be afraid sometimes the word raw seems really extreme but you can eat an apple that's raw. raw. You know, orange, right. that's raw. A banana, that's raw, right? Some spinach, that's raw. Right. If you eat a salad, that's raw, you know, for the most part. So don't hear those words and get scared because you never had to cook the apple anyway, right? You just eat it. Yeah, okay. I think it's the the raw the raw fruits make sense, but the raw vegetables. Raw but vegetables, you can, carrots, you can season celery. It. Oh. Yeah, um, but here's, so this is how you get real good, right? So I'm talking about you You take all the vegetables you can think of, zucchini, mushrooms, red peppers, yellow peppers, onions. Um, you just go for it. You, know, you just go to the produce section and go in, right? And then you go home and then you chop it all up really small to really small pieces. And you get you some big romaine lettuce um, so that you can make lettuce wraps. Uh, we're called lettuce boats. And then you put all that in there, but you got to season it, right? So add some herbs, some mustache, lemon and herb, and some uh -huh. just herbs galore. So it's got some flavors. They got a chipotle version you could put on there for some extra kick and spice. You put that in your lettuce wrap boat, and then you can take you some mango salsa, right? Because mm -hmm. mango is fresh, raw, raw. You can cut that up. Get you some tomatoes, some pico de gallo with that mango and put that on top like a sauce with a little bit of avocado. Woo, come on now. Woo, child. I'm going to make that this weekend. That's how you do it. Weekend. You make a big old container of it, right? I got that from um, Maria Jones. You know, she's body by Maria. She's a beast. Oh, so she knows how to make them girls go raw. Yes, yeah, she's she's a beast. Yes, I yes yeah, she, she is like but i was intimidated but i did that i was like this is amazing this is so yummy like and it's I, so filling i'm gonna do that this weekend mm -hmm. i'm gonna try and i'm gonna take a picture and i'm gonna send it to you good uh and now miss evelyn wants to know uh do you have any health suggestions if someone wants to include some animal products to her diet absolutely so um there are definitely meats that still have some benefits so salmon um so the studies say that this is according to the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. They're doing three days a week with animal protein at four ounces if it's a type of meat. And if it's seafood, I think it should be like as small as like three ounces. Um, should not increase a disease burden. So you should, one could be able to do animal proteins three times a week and not add to their disease burden. Okay. So, but okay. you know why? So salmons are really good. They got good omega threes, which are good for the body, which are anti-inflammatory. Um, doing your white water fishes, um, tuna can do it. You know, but it's got to be in the water. Um, it's interesting for tuna though. If you meet somebody from Alaska and we show them our tuna, they say we feed that to our dogs. Oh, wow! You talking about tuna in the can? Yeah, oh. or in the package. She was like, okay. Yeah like the leftovers were like hey um and even if you do seafood no more than twice a week because of the toxins that are in the ocean and the water right so you have to think about where is it coming from what is it eating that's what matters it matters what it, it's eating and so you want to stay away from animal meats that have hormones injected right so that's what causes a lot of diabetes and and belly weight, right? A lot of that can be from the hormones that they put inside of the chicken to get it to grow bigger or whatever ammo the cow 
it's the reason grass-fed beef digests better than non-grass-fed beef, right? If you ever have it and it's in the wild, it tastes different. So you got to try for yourself sometimes to know. Um, you want to keep your seafoods to less than to twice a week and no more than that, really. Um, definitely pick the types of fish that have low mercury levels. So you got to do a little research or you can buy some good books, right? Eat to Live is a great book. Um, mm -hmm. How Not to Die is a great book. Let Food Be Your Medicine is another good book. So there's tons of resources to help you kind of learn how to dissect out and eat those animal proteins that are better for you. So. Okay. Okay. That was, thank you. I think Miss Evelyn, I hope that answered your question. Did it answer well. your question? I hope it did. You were very thorough. So what do you think about, I know uh, Maria Body My, by Maria encourages sea moss. So somebody has a question, sea moss, yes or no? I Sea moss is a yes. Okay. Um, so just how Karen feels like, so I started, I have, we did the detox drink similar to that at the beginning and it always has sea moss in it. And some reason I, I stopped taking sea moss and then I kind of didn't have as much as my get up and go in the morning. I was like, you know, you seem to take it a little longer than wake up now. And I was like, I think it's because you're not taking sea moss anymore. So I went and bought some more and bing, started wake up in the morning like, hello, okay. Hey. Where did you get it from? <laughs> So the first time I got it, I did get it from Body by Maria. Um, okay. They sourced it from, I think somebody from Jamaica gets it. Okay. And then the second time, or this last time that I got it, I got it from Beet Juice, I think it's a place called. Is Beet, it, did you get Beet it online? Did you no, it's it a, uh, I bought it local at, okay. in Carytown from a, like a. Okay, because I got some from uh, Elwood Thompson. Yeah, Elwood Thompson is the location. It was in powder form though. Okay. Well, you know, so I don't, your body responds. I don't really okay. do the ones where you got to figure it out and make it yourself. Uh -huh. That's not my forte. I need the final that, product. That's why I said it's in powder form. Okay. Yeah. Take a scoop and I put it in my smoothie. Right. Okay. Mine is a gel. I've only had them where they're in kind of like a gel form. Okay. But I, I, I took a picture of the sign because, you know, we don't learn about CMOS in medical school. So let me tell you what the sign said. Because um, I was always fascinated because I was like, what makes it so special? And is this for the sea moss? What's on you? Yeah. Sea okay. moss contains 92 of 102 essential minerals for the human body. Oh. It's ideal for healthy skin. The iodine and mineral compounds aid in the body's production of collagen, which pumps the skin, smooths out wrinkles, and tones and fights the sign of aging. It is an excellent source of iodine, minerals, protein, and potassium chloride, a nutrient which helps to support healthy inf inflammation and phlegm levels in the mucous membranes. This makes it ideal for respiratory issues. This natural superfood contains compounds which support healthy microbial and viral responses in the body, helping to boost immunity. Wow. Okay. Right? That's okay. why I took the picture. I was okay. like, okay, thanks okay. for breaking it down for me. So sea moss is a yes. It's Go a yes. It. Add, add some sea moss, y'all. Yes. Um, someone is trying to find, hi, uh, Preacher May, trying to find some healthy water to drink. Do you have some suggestions around some healthy water to drink? Because water is healthy. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to encourage you to join us next. Well, if you if you can, next Thursday from four to five, that's our be well time. But we have somebody that's been sharing about um, Nikken water, N-I-K-K-E-N. Well, okay. it's a brand, but they make a water filter system, uses charcoal, all this stuff. And we did this test to see if we were stronger after we drank it. And we all were like, really? Yes. What is it? Nikken? N-I-K-K-E-N. It's, it's a, of, yeah, that's how you spell it. Is it a bottled water? Is it a filtration system? Like, it's a filtration it? system. Okay. It's a company that made a filtration system. Okay. Um, But the water you want to be drinking is alkaline water, right? Because it's more healing for the body. It's just sometimes they say that on the bottle and it may not actually be true in life, right? So tap water is right neutral, right in the middle. So it really doesn't promote healing. And it's got chlorine and stuff like that in it, which, you know, it's not so great for the body. Um, a lot of bottled waters have a lot of plastics leached into them. So you really have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, like I just, their water has been fascinating i just learned about it in the last two weeks because they've been teaching us so i'm still learning about it and i'm just like so, i've got to get this filtering system 
So, so is alkaline water with the higher pH better than tap water? So it's alkaline. Do you recommend alkaline water? Alkaline is the best water. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's All best right. for you. It promotes healing for the body. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All but right. you might want to be old school and get you one of those pH tests and actually test the water and see if it's alkaline. Because if it's really alkaline. If it's really alkaline. I don't want to throw out brand names because I don't want nobody trying to sue me. Another. Are we that popular yet to get sued? But um, no, 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 Well, yeah. We are popular. We are popular. Yeah. Okay. But, but a number of bottle waters, like today they did Dasani and Dasani was acidic. And I was yeah. like, what? And yeah. so... And the water I like to drink was not that great either. And then it, it was this really fancy water that was like two dollars and fifty cent a bottle, and it still showed it's up. Probably, tra yeah. It's like it's all about the marketing. Yeah, it is. It, it is. is such marketing. And so, if you can go to like a Whole Foods store that has it, where you can pull it out the thing, or there's some other say alkaline. I think Fiji water is probably a good one. Yeah, that's um, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. So we you wanted to do be alkaline let's have some minerals in it um okay be purified but uh, i'm not a water expert but there is a good book called 12 pillars of health by dr don colbert and there's a whole mm -hmm. section about water and i was even like at first i was like it don't take all that just drink some water uh -huh. but the body is way smarter than you think it has a preference it's got it's a preference it's like you drink this you get this level of energy you drink this you're gonna be like woohoo i'm healing everything so. <laughs> Okay, Check. so zoom in with us next week if you want. Um, it's on our website. You can just zoom in. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Your your Be Well on Thursdays, is that um, virtual or is it just in person? It's virtual and in person. Yep, so you okay. can join us from where you are. Mm -hmm. So you said we can. people can go to your website. They can, yeah. If they're a patient, okay. it's just maybe whatever their copay might be. If they don't have a copay, there's a group medical visit. and so Or if they want to okay. just try it out for once, it's just a $35 investment. Okay, um, I want to make sure people know that. It's, so yeah. it, it's on the website. Let me pop your website back up here right quick so that people know it. If you're and you said it's on, is it on starting this Thursday? Next it's Thursday? been going on. It's already in effect. Yeah. Okay. And we're actually probably going to keep it trending 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern okay. Standard Time. Okay. So on the screen, you all, is the contact information. The website is gardenofedenrba.com. If you want to go directly to her website to get more information about Be Well, to sign up for that program, it's on every Thursday from four to five. Mm -hmm. Okay. so And if you're interested in that time of day doesn't work for you, we always like to create more programs by popular demand and time. So go to the contact session and say, hey, I'd love to do it, especially if it was at this time, this day, and we get a crowd and, and we'll do it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. That is, and it's virtual. Yay. Okay. Let me see if I can get back to a few of these questions. I know someone asked about um, uh, fruits, like not all fruits. I had it up here a moment ago. Not all fruits were created equal. That's not what the person said. She said, I know that all sugar is not the same. Could you speak to sugar from fruits? How much is too much? So that sometimes depends on your uh, if there's any disease in the body, because otherwise the body can handle it, right? It'll take okay. what it wants, get rid of it. So um, when we say whole food, plant-based, if you eat the apple, it can control the sugar, right? It's not going to make your sugars go up or crazy. If you blend it, you change it, so now you can absorb it faster. So now okay. you have to be more thoughtful. And then if you juice it, then, of course, you can absorb the sugar super fast, Right. So it depends on how you change the composition of the fruit to know if it's going to absorb. Fast absorption of sugar is not good for the body. So that's okay. that's what you're looking for. That's what happens with soda or like white rice or something that makes the sugar spike. And if you do that over and over and over, your body is not happy about that. So so does it mean that the the fast absorption of the sugar, like from soda, does that mean that the, the glucose levels or the glucose can't penetrate the cells to use it for energy, or do, does it penetrate too quickly? Or am I it, too scientific? I just, I just was listening to. No, the, it's the okay. It means it gets in the bloodstream very quickly, and your body's trying to quickly get it down quickly, so you end up absorbing a lot of sugar into the body. It oh, becomes okay. diabetes when we call it insulin resistant, meaning your sugars are high, your body's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, sluggish oh, to okay. kind of pull it back. So. But the point is, you should eat tons of fruit, okay? okay they did a study for diabetics, and the more fruit they ate, the better their diabetes got. 
Wow. Yeah, I will. There are some things like you don't, you know, of course, bananas, grapes, pineapples, those tend to be um, make your shoot. They can go up a little faster versus like berries. They don't make your sugars go up. You know, they're very good control because of the fiber that's okay. in them. That's what slows it down is the fiber. So if you're doing the fiber with your fruits, it gets it at a nice pace. Your body loves the sweetness. It's the reason you'll keep eating it. So go for it. Um Oh, okay. That is yeah. okay. So it's the, so what about if you wanted to lose weight, should you stay away from bananas and fruits that are higher in sugar, or should you stay to like the berries lower in sugar? If you want to lose weight, if you want to lose weight, you can eat them. You can eat it. You okay. know, you might not want to eat a banana right before bed. Cause where are you going to burn that energy? Right. Okay. Food is okay. energy. And you're just about to go down, lay down and nap. Okay. But it's sure better than eating Ben and Jerry's before bed. Yeah. Okay. So Come let's on. keep it relevant. <laughs> so if you got a sweet tooth that night, get your berries in, have them, and you'll just see how your body works. But okay. the body is so, because you're giving it nutrition, right? It's not, we're, we're it's so isolating. Real it's real nutrition. Yeah, it's it's real like nutrition. Okay. Nutrition. And then Preacher Main wants to know, it's, uh, should we consume more fruit than veggies or the opposite? Or should it equal out? So should you have more than the other in terms of fruits and veggies? The reality is that God made them both for a reason. They okay. both have benefits. So get them both in your, your eating plan on a regular, consistent basis. If you eat like the rainbow, whether it's fruits or vegetables, you're going to find yourself nutrient-rich, um, there was a cool quote by Dr. Furman in his book, Eat to Live. And he said, cancer is a fruit and vegetable deficiency disease. Wait, say that one more time. Cancer is a fruit and vegetable deficiency disease. Wow. Because wow. Right? Because so, pe people have correct or cured themselves from cancer by going to an all raw plant-based diet. I know I've read studies on that. Mm -hmm. It's true. So cancer is a fruit and vegetable deficiency disease. Yeah, that was his quote. Wow. Wow. Because ask yourself, how many pieces of fruit do you eat in a day? Not in a week, a day. I mean, I encourage you to get eight servings a day. That was a recommended allowance at one time. It might be up to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Not like each, but total. So I tell people, start easy. Give me four servings of fruit a day, four servings of vegetables. Wow. You okay. know? Make sure you eat some green leafy every day, right? Every color, eat the rainbow of colors mm -hmm. and your body will just do what it does. Heal itself, shed the weight, make you feel happier. You'll love it. And that's what um, some uh, another myth that I think you've already debunked is that uh, when you go plant-based, you know, plant-based is boring. Mm -hmm. Like, but no, that's a myth. Like, in terms of what we typically eat, we did we eat chicken and and other meat that's seasoned different ways. But but that when I think about it, that's boring. Plants mm -hmm. like most of the plants, and when I go to the grocery store, most of the plants or fruits and vegetables I've never even had. Like I look at the produce aisle, I don't eat all of that stuff. So it's like it's not boring. It's exciting. It's like a whole new world for me because most vegetables I have never even eaten. Never. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. It is so many conversations going on here. I'm trying to pull out these questions. I, it's just, I'm glad you all are engaging and communicating with each other. It is so many conversations that's happening here. I'm trying to see if I can pull out a question. I think I've gotten most of the questions. Um, somebody did ask a question about um, inter intermediate fasting. I don't think I pronounced it. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yep. Fasting, you know, fasting is in the Bible for a reason. It is beneficial to longevity, health, your spiritual well being, and your soul. So it's a body, soul, spirit combo. So, yes to intermittent fasting. Do it. Do it. Okay. So, is it so that is that's when you eat from? It can vary. There's okay. not like a one way to do it. You might go where you have one day a week where you just you just do water that day and you eat the next day, right? But okay. whenever you're fasting, I'd like to encourage people to drink lots of water because your body's starting to detox and heal. So okay. you, want that, you want the waste to flush out of your body, not just kind of stick around. Um, some people do a 12-hour window. 
I just would caution you to not get so into your window of eating that you don't eat what you're supposed to in your eating window, right? Because okay. many of us don't eat enough of the right foods. Mm -hmm. So make sure that window of eating time is big enough that you're getting all the nutrients in that you need to for your body to function. And okay. then you can fast. So, you know, most of the time we eat too late at night. So if you stop by 8 p.m. and then mm -hmm. ate again at 8 in the morning, that would be a 12-hour fast. Okay. Well, quick question about that. Is there... When should you stop eating? Like um, before you go to bed? Is it is it the is it like three hours before you go to sleep? Or if people will say, "Oh no, don't eat after nothing. Don't eat anything after seven, or don't eat anything after eight. Is there a ideal time to stop eating? The best time to stop eating before bed? About three to four hours before you go to bed. Okay, about three to four hours. Okay, yeah. I like. I have got the heavier that you're eating, kind of the earlier. You know, if you having steak. Really, you should eat something heavy, the heaviest meal in the middle of the day. So you've got time to burn it off. Okay. Right? So okay. that's okay. how you think about it. Like, if you know you eat something, have time to burn it off. Like, go take a walk afterwards. And so if you know you have to eat and get into bed, then you should be eating a salad. Oh, right? okay. So it's going to burn fast or just not make your belly stick out later. <laughs> yes. I know. I don't know what country, but I know there are some countries that their their lunch is their dinner. Oh, like Spain, I, Europe. Our biggest, you said it's in Europe where yeah, lunch, the heaviest Spain. meal is lunchtime as opposed to dinner. Mm -hmm. So that, mm -hmm. that's yes, yes, right after it. Yes, ma'am. I have got to post this comment because this is the funniest comment. Trina said when you were talking about eating the, the rainbow of colors, she said, I'm standing here eating Skittles while watching this slide. <laughs> Trina, that they're advertising because humans, we can see color. Many animals can't see color like we do. Yes, that is we true. We are attracted uh -huh. to colorful things. That's why uh -huh. the produce section should be colorful and attractive. And scientists learned that. And so, unfortunately, they got some of those same scientists into the candy industry. And they were like, hey, if you make it colorful, they'll eat more of it. Wow. That is, that's see, why they're it colorful. is. It's all about. M and M's. Yes, color, yes, that is true. Even when you look at the wrappers of candy, they're yes. really very bright yellows, like my yellow laffy taffy, but that I loved. But I don't eat and it. And it says banana laffy taffy. Do you ever read the nutrition label to see if there's any bananas in it? Yeah, I'm sure it's not even a yeah. banana. Uh, flavoring in it, you are. Too, it's just full of sugar, full right? Of sugar, like I just, at least leave some banana. We gonna call it banana this or that. Now that I can't even get ginger um, ale hardly without with no with ginger in it. Go look at I, your ginger ale. Your your show. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I even went out um and I was out with Hassan last night, and he bought some some. Wait, hold on. He bought some chickpea some type of chip that was supposed to be healthy that had kale and quinoa in it. Mm -hmm. And I picked it up and I looked at the back and I said, look at this. Do you see any kale or any quinoa anywhere? And he said, yeah, I do. And if you looked at the label in terms of the ingredients, kale and quinoa was the last two ingredients. I wish I had that wrapper, the last two, <laughs> which meant it had maybe a, a dot nothing in it just a, a, a kernel of, of kale and quinoa but that's what was promoted on the package kale right. and quinoa like this is some type of healthy snack but veggie chip veggie straws yeah yeah veggie straws yes yes like oh. what are veggie <laughs> straws hi trish the natural thanks for joining us um somebody else had a question about fruits hold on i think it was edward was it you yes what do you think about um fruit veggie supplements and we're about to wrap up normally we're about an hour normally i might go over a few minutes so a few more questions and then we will give you your evening back so what do you think about fruit or veggie supplements are there fruit and veggie supplements i don't know if i've heard of fruit and so more like it. Um, I I say people get supplements. Make sure they're more plant based, right? Like okay. when you go to that label, are they made from apples, oranges? You know, you should see real fruits on there that that's it's been extracted from. Otherwise, okay. you know how much nutrition is in it. Now it's still synthesized and processed. Okay. So definitely, you want them to be a more plant based type of nutrition supplement. Um, most of the time, you know, supplements are. We do need to supplement because of how foods have been grown. If they were mm -hmm. still grown the way God told us to do it, we'd be fine. And maybe you need mm -hmm. to do B12 and vitamin D. Mm -hmm. on the side. 
Um, so actually, you wouldn't even need B12 because we would have kept it a little dirty and been fine and had the bacteria, ate it, and we, we'd be totally fine. So okay. um, we should just stick with the garden, man. Stick with the garden. You, the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. That's right. That's right. It's where God made us. That's it's where we get our best nourishment. That is where we got our name from, right? Restoring uh -huh. health and wholeness, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and so it's so important. So yes, do the supplements, but guess what? You have to eat something. So Edward, after you take your good supplements, make sure you're eating real fruits, real vegetables, real beans, real whole grains, because those things have life. And at least you know how long it's been around. You okay. Yeah. Life. So don't replace the supplements with, don't replace food with supplements. That's right. Supplement you cannot supplement. Over supplement. You cannot supplement out a bad diet. Mm. Right. Good. That's good. Yes. That's good. And mm -hmm. you mentioned B12 because that's something else that I hear because our body doesn't make B12 as vegans, as vegans that are not as vegetarians, but vegans, you, you have to supplement uh, with B12. Is that true? Or what are your thoughts about that? That is true. It's a fact. You got to protect your brain because um, B12 actually is made by the, the bacteria and dirt. Mm -hmm. you know out there and so animals eat it they're just churning when you eat the animal meat you get b12 mm -hmm. but we don't get the b12 from just a plant-based side so that is a supplement that you have to do i think okay. 250 micrograms a week is all that's needed how many what is how many did 250 you micrograms 250 i'm gonna write that down for myself right um i recommend a great website it's called nutritionfacts.org f-a-c-t-s nutritionfacts.org and you can go there. It's free. It's evidence-based. It's um, upheld by Dr. Michael Greger. He's got cool, dry humor if you like it. And he does all these videos. So you can put in there vitamin B12. And it's how much should we have based on our age. Mm -hmm. And it's all evidence-based backed up. And he'll even give you the um, research that went with it. So okay, all your fingertips. Okay. Well, it is nutritionfacts.org. Nutritionfacts.org. All right. Well, we are wrapping up. Um, Pat said it's such a great kitchen table type sister to sister conversation. Thank you, Pat. Your professionalism and knowledge is great and so helpful. Thank you so much. And thank you all uh, for joining us. Um, I think I, I pretty much wrapped up most of the questions. It's a lot of uh, engagement between the people online. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. Um, and to wrap everything up, y'all notice I didn't say anything about hair. I didn't answer any questions about hair. So I had, I was off tonight. So that's great. But ultimately, <laughs> the bottom line is if you all can get your bodies healthy with the proper nutrition from plants, then I promise you it will affect your hair. So you all know that I just went uh, vegetarian, not vegan, about three weeks ago. So yes, I am also monitoring it to see what it does to my hair. I know my hair best. So once I get uh, an update, once I see changes within my hair, because I believe I am going to see changes in my hair for the best, because I will not be B12 deficient and lose my hair. We're not doing that. But once I do start to notice changes in my hair, I will give you all an update on that. And thank you. Thank you for loving my hairstyle. You got anything else to say, Dr. Madison, before we roll out for the evening? I'm just excited that y'all are hearing this and learning. Um, we definitely welcome you here at the Garden of Eden Health Center. If you want to have a doctor medical consult, or if you want to change your primary care doctor, come on over. We're taking new patients. If you Great. just want to consult for any of your health issues and want to know a little more deeper dive, we're glad to coach you along. And if you want a group environment, that's what we enjoy doing. You want a whole hour to talk about this stuff, join one of our Be Well programs, and you'll be so glad you did. We have a lot of fun together. That's why Karen and I vibe. So we like to have fun sharing, empowering you with education. That's our mission so that you know how to eat to live and live long, healthy, and strong because that is God's will for you. And we just enjoy backing up whatever our creator wants for us. Well, fantastic. I think you wrapped it up very nicely, but I got to say one more thing that I'm going to get off. The thing that I love about Dr. Madison during your first appointment, should you see her as a as your physician, she will not be in the room with you for 10 minutes, like most doctor's office. She is going to take her time. I don't know if it's 30 minutes. I don't know if it's an hour, that first appointment. 
but she takes her time and she listens to you. So you're not just like, like an assembly line where doctors just get you in and out. They ask you a few questions, write a prescription, and then you leave. No, her first appointment, that first appointment is a very long time and she listens to you. So I endorse, I support, I encourage you all to see Dr. Um, Madison for your primary care. I have put her contact information on the screen. You can go directly to her website, gardenofedenrba.com, the telephone number, and she is just awesome. So I thank you, Dr. Madison. Thank you so much. I know this is last minute. I know I just asked you last week and you jumped on this live with me. So I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sure as my earring just fell out, that we will do this again. Thank you, okay. Have a great night. Okay, and I always sign off until we talk again. Stay fabulous.